Hello and welcome to 5 Minutes of Postgres. My name is Lucas and today we're going to talk about how you can optimize count statements in Postgres by using what I like to call a limited count, or as Lucas Ader calls it in this blog post, checking for existence of multiple values in SQL. In this post, Lucas expands on a previous post where he was talking about the benefits of using SQL exists instead of counting. The big argument there is that if you're doing a count star in Postgres that has to look at the actual rows to check visibility, it's actually an expensive operation. If you have a lot of records, doing a count across a lot of records is not a good idea. And so in this example here from Lucas's previous post, he was showing that if you do a select count star from this actors table, but really all you care about is the fact, are there any actors in that table that match a particular name? It's much more efficient to do a select exists and inside the exists, you're doing a subselect. The argument here is that as soon as one row gets returned, Postgres can return early because it has proven that at least one value exists. Today, what we want to talk about is a very similar situation. But what we want to talk about is not when I'm checking for existence of a single value, but when I want to know whether there is at least two values, 10 values, or 100 values. And so essentially, I care about you know, not a precise number, but if I want to know, are there at least that many elements? And so what Lucas essentially suggests here is instead of us writing something like a select count star, and then we put a Boolean condition around this. If you did this on a SQL side, you do a subselect and you're saying a select count star, but then on the outside, you're doing a select and you're saying just larger equals two. And so this is not performant is the argument because what we should be doing instead is we should be asking the database to only count at most two values. So here we're getting the records and we limit that by two and then we return. The big benefit here is that the database doesn't have to count things unnecessarily because you don't care about if there's three or four, you just care whether there is at least two. And so what Lucas shows here is in terms of query plans, he compares a couple of databases, but we're mainly interested in Postgres here. What he shows here is if we don't have a limit, if we just have the initial query that he showed, you can first see that this particular query is doing a nested loop. And you can see that the nested loop is estimated to return 55 rows. In this case, it is actually returning 56 rows, roughly correct estimate from the Postgres planner in this case. And then things get aggregated and ultimately we return a single row, which is that Boolean expression that we're evaluating whether there are two or more rows. With the limit in place that Lucas just described, you can see that Postgres will actually still estimate that there are going to be 55 rows returned, but then in the actual execution, it only returns two rows and then it's able to terminate early. There's not a big difference in this particular query, but you can see that the second query here is slightly faster. The first one took 0 0.039 milliseconds. The second one took 0 0.024 milliseconds. As Lucas states here, if you're counting all the records, that's going to be consistently and significantly slower than if you're doing a limit. Now, this can sometimes seem a little bit hard to understand in terms of how would I actually use this in practice. I want to show you an example of a change that I made in our own application, PG Analyze, where we added a limit to account statement to make things load much faster. The context here is inside PG Analyze, we have these query pages. And I'm showing you the version of the query page before the change. And the relevant portion to look for here is roughly in the middle of the screen where you see log entries. And it shows about 74,000 log entries. These are all the log entries for this particular query in the system. These are things like auto-explain outputs, slow query logs and whatnot. The idea is that when I'm looking at this query details page in the app here, I don't actually need to know that there's exactly 74,000 log entries. So this is a great example where instead of doing an exact count, we can use this limit technique to make it much faster. Let me jump to the console and this is running locally. When we implement this change I'm about to show you, we did see quite significant improvement on production, but locally, of course, it's going to be slightly less pronounced. And so here in this case, we're fetching roughly the same time range. We have 75,000 rows being returned, and we have a select count star at the top of the statement. So we get the exact count. Now let's look at the execution plan to understand better what this is actually doing. And so this is a bit hard to read, arguably, but the simplest thing is that this is a partition table. And so you can see here that it's essentially scanning the indexes and then it's returning all this data from each partition, a little portion of the data. And then at the end, it's aggregating it to get that count. But we essentially have those 75,000 rows that we're aggregating that we're getting from the whole partition tree. Now what we want to compare this with is what if we do a limit? Let me just illustrate for clarity again. This is the version of a simple count star. And then the version that is a lot faster is this version right here. So what we're doing is we have a select count star on the outside, 
but in the inside, we have to select one or in Lucas's example, select star. And we limit this and we limit this here by 101. I'm going to explain to you in a second why it's 101 and not 100. But the idea is that this only has to fetch 101 rows from this log lines table here, then the query can return. Just to illustrate this in terms of timing difference, so if we run the first version of select count star, runs a couple of times, it's like 35 milliseconds. And now if we run the version that has a limit in place, that runs in a much nicer five milliseconds. Again, this is locally on production, this would probably be even slower, but the difference here is roughly 36, 35 milliseconds for the version where we do an exact count, we get the full number, versus if we just look at, we have at least 100 records, that's gonna be much faster. The trick here again is the Postgres will return early from the index scan on these different tables. And a bit hard to read because of the append, but you can see here that in the append note that pulls the data from the different partitions here, we can see that there's only 101 rows being returned, whereas in the other case, we got the full 75,000 rows. So this is a very good technique. What you do have to think about, of course, how you present it in the user experience that you have in your application. So here, previously, what we would do is we would show the exact count. And you could still get the exact count if you clicked on it, but sometimes you want to just have these hints of there's at least this many records. And so we, we end up changing is on the client side, we now show a hundred plus. This comes back to the difference between where we fetch 101 rows, not 100 rows, is because if you have exactly 100 rows, we do want to show you log entries 100. But if you have 101 at least, then we just show the plus sign at the end. And from a user experience, it doesn't make a big difference, but the page in this case loads noticeably faster because we added that limit statement there at the end. Thank you so much for listening. This was 5 Minutes of Postgres. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear about next week's episode and talk to you next week. Thank you.